Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Ericsson TV. Curtis here with Lauren. Hey Lauren. Hey everybody. Hey Lauren, um, behind us, which we're blocking right now, right. is this very <laughs> colorful chart. Um, yes. And if you could just take a brief second to explain what, what is showing on this chart, and then we can take it from there. I'm going okay. to step away here to look at this chart. So right. Sideways. So we, we see, you see all these colors all over the place on this chart. You probably can't read the actual numbers, but you can probably see those colors everywhere. What this chart shows is here are the years from top to bottom from 1973 to 2010. So that's time. And then over here we have the best to the worst. And what are we measuring? We're measuring the different things you can invest in from uh, two different types of bonds, cash, uh, four different types of US stocks, and two different types of international stocks. Okay. So there's uh, nine things all total that we're looking at. And the reason the colors are all over the place is because each sort of thing that you can invest in, we gave a color. And so for every year, you can see which one is the best one and which one is the worst one. And hopefully, all of you looking at this, it will immediately stand out to you that there is no obvious rhyme or reason or to, there's no obvious way to predict uh, which color is going to show up where on uh, which year. Right. What I, what, I see, what I see happening, and this is, this is not the, the necessarily the investor's fault, but like they might look and say, okay, this asset class has performed really well two consecutive years, so that's about yes. the time a lot of them want to start investing in it. Right. And then look what happens. And it starts the head down. Uh, <laughs> uh, very few people when, when very few people, when they see the asset classes like around here that the worst performing, that, that very few people will say, hey, this is a great time to invest right. in this asset class. Of course, then they, they miss out on this return over here. Right. Um, so this, this is actually, I, I believe, happening this year in 2011. We don't show 2011, but some of the strongest perform performers the last three full years now are this year to date have been some of the worst performers. That's right. Um, so what does the unsophisticator do, do if they've been investing in, the, in these, these asset classes well, and it's a bad performer? Yeah, unfortunately what, what a lot of people will do is they'll, in maybe the beginning of 2011, they would have seen that emerging markets or international small companies or just international stocks in general have done extremely well for the last two years. They think, oh, now is a good time to buy or now is a good time to put my entire portfolio into emerging markets or something similar. And then, of course, what happens is this is the year when those asset classes do poorly. And uh, our approach is pretty much the exact opposite. Right. We recommend that you rebalance, which means during those years when they were doing well, we were actually selling a little bit of, of what right. we were moving out a little bit. And now when they're do doing poorly, we're buying in. Right. And I think, I think the other thing I want to be really clear about for our clients that, that are current investors with us, we don't know one or two or three of these, we own all these asset right, classes. Right, exactly. Um, so, so really, uh, and the reason we, and one of the reasons we do that is because of diversification, we never know which is going to be the better performer. And then number two, what Lauren just said, is we want to be able to rebalance among these different asset classes. So when some are having a bad performance like this year, like Lauren just said, we rebuy some of it. When some of them have a great year like they did the last three years, we actually sell some of it off the top. Right. Rebalance into the low, lower performing class, and and what what is, and one of the things I see also uh, based on what the mutual fund outflows are up through uh, even this month is that people right. are selling their their equity funds and going to cash. Yes, they're still doing that. And see what is not the, a good. cash is is the yellow color. Um, the the thing I notice is that never has cash been the best asset class performance uh, going back to 1973. Uh, often it's, it's at the lower tier. Yeah. Um, so cash is, I guess, a place you could you could put your money for stability. But you're not going to get uh, uh, above inflation returns. Is, is what I'm seeing here. Right. On that. And then uh, last but not least is when we see uh, most uh, 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 new clients' portfolios and do the analysis, um, and whether they have a 401k, whether they're investing in one of the 15,000 mutual funds. Right. Typically, their their fund is weighted toward this blue one, which is U.S. large company stocks like the S&P 500. Right. That's the very common one. And as you can see, that also is rarely the best performing asset class. It's usually kind of a middling uh, asset. You know, in middling here, blues kind of all around here in the middle. And that and and so that's kind of the the, the generic stock market return. The thing I want we I wanted to point out, and Lauren, you know this uh, very well too, is that. Some of these other asset classes are generally going to provide a, a premium or an increased return over that generic, you know, large company. And and part of that reason is because of the risk and reward. Uh, you can see, like for instance, I'll just use this as an example. U.S. small companies was the lot, the leading indicator for uh, the last two full years. But look at this. Often it's it's the lagger, you know, down yeah. here. So it's that risk and reward. The volatility is what we're 
we're looking forward to get that return. So any, any final comments, Lauren? Well, what you just explained is one of the reasons why it's so critical for us to rebalance things and not to uh, put all of our money in what went what did really well last year and also not to sell out of what did really poor, poorly last year or last quarter. You want to do the exact opposite of that. Right. And, and, and to follow up on that exactly as a real life principle, when we see our clients year to date performance is down because of some of these asset classes have, have underperformed, we don't, we don't individually as their, our client's advisor get discouraged by that. We look at that as an opportunity right. to buy more of it because it's right. cheaper. So, exactly. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode of Ericsson TV. And by the way, um, when Kelsey sends this out to you, this chart will be built into your uh, email so you can actually print it out and take a look at it. It's right. hard to read on the screen. But yeah. um, thank you very much for watching this episode, and we'll see you next time. See you Bye next now. time.